things. There's a third step called worship to that. And that scripture is literal. We often take that scripture as somewhat of a metaphor, right? You should give thanks to God and you should also praise him. But that's literal. The first step towards praising God, towards getting a breakthrough, is thanksgiving. That's why we do it this way. That's why we come in here and we get everybody hyped up and we tell you, in your car on the way to church, start praising God. Start giving thanks for everything he's done this week. And then when we get here, we start with praise, right? Praise is the weapon. Praise is is what's going to get you that breakthrough, right? The third step is worship. If we want to actually get to our breakthrough, actually use praise as a weapon, we have to understand that there are three steps here. We're going to give thanks to God. We're going to say, God, you are so good. You've done all these things for me. I'm not good enough. I don't deserve them. But you have grace and you have mercy and you've given them to me anyways, right? Then we step into praise. We say, God, you're still good. Look at this thing you're doing for me. I'm going to break down this wall with your power. I am going to channel all that is in your spirit with all that is within me, and I'm going to dedicate it to serving you through whatever obstacle I'm going through. And then, once those chains are broken, we can have that intimate relationship with the chain breaker. We can have that intimate relationship. We say, God, you're so good. I've, you've done all these things for me. I worship and I praise you with everything that is within me, God. I have this intimate relationship where I can spend time just with me and you. Just with me and you. So when we're back at step one, let's understand that. Let's live a life instead of just having this be inside these four walls. Let's give it outside these four walls where we say, God, I really want to live a life that goes from, from here to here, vertical, right? But first, we have to live a life that goes horizontal where everything I do says that God is good. Everything I do is part of my warfare with the enemy. Everything that I do and everything that I am is part of praise, right? If we look at King David, every time he had a, he had a, a little bit of an issue a bit of a, his village got pillaged. His wives got taken away. What did he do? He praised God openly. He wept openly. He danced in the palace. How weird is that? You're a servant and you see your king dancing before the Lord in the palace. Let's dance before the Lord this morning. That's what we're here to do. We are here to exhibit warfare so we can get into this place of victory. Here is warfare and here is victory. Let's get there. Let's praise God. Thank you, Jesus. You've been so good this week. You've been so good since the beginning of time. The goodness does not let up. The goodness does not let up. I thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you that you give each one of us the opportunity to live that horizontal life that exudes your goodness and exudes your love over everybody who it hasn't reached yet. I thank you, Lord, that there is a deeper, a deeper understanding for each and every one of us. I thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. As we worship this morning, we are going to exhibit warfare on the enemy. And then towards the end, we're probably going to get into this place of victory. But we have to go through that warfare first. We have to be soldiers who are willing to fight this horizontal battle before we get to that place where we can enjoy that intimate relationship. Let's do it. Hallelujah. Well, we've come to praise Him. We've come into His house. Amen. Some might be saying, well, what's a throwback Sunday? Well, that's kind of where we take and go back to some of the older songs that we used to do. Amen. There's something in those older songs. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Let's lift our voice and give him praise. Hallelujah. Coming to this house, magnify the Lord. Lift up holy hands, all in one accord. For he's worthy, worthy of all our praise. Well, he's worthy, worthy of all our praise. Come into this house, magnify the Lord. Lift up holy hands, all in one accord. Exalt His holy name. Well, coming to this 
town Magnify the Lord Lift up holy hands All in one accord For worthy Worthy of all our praise Yes, He's worthy Worthy of all our praise Sing again Come to this house Magnify the Lord, lift up holy hands, all in one accord, for He's worthy, worthy of all our praise. Yes, He's worthy, worthy of all our praise. All oh, He's worthy of glory and honor, worthy of honor and glory, worthy of power. Clap your hands and worship him today. Oh, 
in the morning. Amen. Why don't you go around and shake somebody's hand. Let them know that you're glad they're here this morning. And everybody that's with us this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you for joining us. You that are viewing on the internet at home, sorry you're not here, but we love you. We're so glad that you joined us today. your praise today, Lord. We give you thanks for your goodness and your mercy. We give you glory for what you're doing. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to get ready here to receive and, and observe communion. And, and as we do, as we're getting ready, uh, I just want us to prepare our hearts. You know, Paul had a revelation in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 that the Lord had personally given him about communion. Communion is very, very important. We need to prepare our hearts to worship the Lord, prepare our hearts for communion. Because the Bible says in uh, 1 Corinthians eleven twenty eight that that there were some that had prematurely fallen asleep or passed away because they weren't rightly discerning the Lord's body. And so what do you mean by that? Well, there's just... There's a, a way of life that we need to live that's pure and holy before the Lord. And discerning the Lord's body also means about our relationship one with another. 
Jesus said that before you even bring a gift to the altar, if you have anything that is a, a, a disagreement, an ought with another brother or sister, don't even think about bringing your gift to the altar without first getting right with that person because there's no blessing upon it. That means if you've got ought in your heart or if you've got a, a, a strife with a brother or sister, that's, that's not rightly discerning the Lord's body because we're all part of the Lord's body. And so I want us to prepare our hearts, ask the Lord for cleansing. Let's make our hearts right before the Lord that we don't eat and drink of this unworthily. Father, we thank you. We thank you. Lord, today as we observe and honor you with communion, we come to you. You said in the word that if we confess our sin, you are faithful and just to forgive us. So anything that we've done in our flesh and in our, in our life, we ask you for cleansing. Wrong thoughts, wrong attitudes, wrong motives. Anything that we even unconsciously did that was wrong before you, we ask for a cleansing. We ask for a purifying. And so we confess that before you and ask for forgiveness. Lord, release the person that we've had a, a, an argument with or whatever. If we forgive them. Help them to forgive us. Now, Jesus at the table, he took the bread, he broke it, and he gave it to each one. And he said, take, eat, for this is my body which is given for you. And the reason why he took from the loaf is because we all represent a piece of the body of Christ. And so he took from that one loaf which and gave to each piece. That's why we have the bread before us. The Bible talks about that on the cross, and even before the cross, as why I was having communion with the worship team, at the Garden of Gethsemane is where it began. Jesus at that moment began to take on all of our griefs, our pains, our sorrows, and even the pressure and the weight of all mankind's sin. And then as he was taken from that garden, he was brought before Pilate. And he was scourged and whipped and he was beaten according to Isaiah 53. And in the Isaiah, it says that he was, his visage was unrecognizable. They beat him so bad that he was unrecognizable as a human being. He was a bloody blob. He did that for you and I. He bore our sins and he bore our griefs, our pains, our sorrows, our sickness and disease. And as they mocked him, and spat upon him. They took a crown of thorns and placed it upon his head. And those thorns were huge. And they dug into him. That thorny crown represented the curse on all of the earth for our laborer. Jesus took the curse of what destroys prosperity and bore that. That's why he that was rich became poor for our sakes, that through his poverty we might become rich. So he took the curse of poverty, sickness, disease, pain, grief, sorrow, everything, and he bore it upon his body. So today, Lord, we, we take this, we honor you, we thank you. Lord, there's not enough words that we can say. There's nothing we can say any more than just thank you. It's beyond our understanding. But we just say thank you, Jesus. Let's receive that today. Jesus took also the cup he said, take and drink you all of it, for this represents the blood of the new covenant. It's his blood that was shed for us. The blood of the new covenant. It's not the blood of bulls and goats. It's the only blood. And the blood of Jesus does something much more. It cleanses our conscience. 
the old man, the memories, the thoughts, the way we were, the blood of Jesus washes that away. And so as we receive this, let's do it in remembrance of him. And we thank you, Lord, for the blood of the new covenant. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you. Now, if you'll just pass your cups to the aisles, one of the ushers will assist you. This is our opportunity to continue to worship. We're going to enter into his presence. We've entered into his courts with thanksgiving and praise. And now let's come before him and magnify his name and worship him. Lift your voice, maybe lift your hands to heaven and just begin to worship him. stop playing. Lord, we worship you. Holy Spirit, fall fresh. Fall fresh. Fall fresh on every heart. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And I'll sing your praises forever. Sing it together now. I sing your praises forever, deeper in love with you. Here in your courts, where I close to your throne, and I found where I belong. You are.
Oh uh-huh. 
Just begin to worship him in the spirit. Lord, we glorify. Lord, you are a mighty, mighty God. And we worship you with all that's within us. Hallelujah. Exalt him today.
we glorify you today, Lord. Shalabanda sarabande, shironda raba sorramande reshte kavronda de basso, randi de boshu kuramande rosso. Just glorify him, magnify him. Shironda de boshu kuramande, shironda de boshu kuramande reshte. Focus on me. Close your eyes. Just look to me. Not to the right, not to the left. Don't look back. I move you forward. But look to me. Keep your eyes on me. For I am your Savior. I am the great I am. Look to me. Look to me. Hallelujah. Amen. That just confirms what I saw. I was, I was seeing something in the spirit. That's why I saw and said just to pray. I saw people like coming down the aisle. And, and I don't know if you've ever had a shoelace or a pant leg, but it trips you up. And, you you know, you, you know what I'm talking about. You know, you... You, you ladies that walked down the aisle when you got married, you know, maybe your, your wedding dress was so long or everything. I saw people in the body of Christ walking and being tripped up and stumbling. And just as Sister Anna said by the word of the Lord, it's because we're not focused upon Him. We're looking here, we're looking there. We're, we're grasping for things. Our focus must be on Him. We can grasp for straws anywhere. Our help only comes from God. Our help is in Him. And many people are stumbling in life, and God doesn't want us to stumble. The Bible says that the steps of a righteous man are ordered of the Lord. Ordered means that they're put in order and in place. And I know the scripture does say that if a righteous man stumble and fall, he'll get up seven times. Amen. That's true. We will. But what I saw wasn't, I saw people just tripping over things that, that, that are just there, that are under their feet. 
that they can actually take care of. You can either pull your pant legs up or you can tie your shoelace. Amen? The choice is ours to keep tripping and stumbling or tie our shoelace, pull your pant legs up or skirt, whatever it is. And so I think the word of the Lord is speaking to us right now especially in these times that we live, to put our steps in order. Make sure that our focus is upon Him. Make sure that we're pressing in to the Word of the Lord and getting our, our, our guidance, our direction from the Word, the written Word, the spoken Word, the Spirit of God guiding us every day. Because the Bible says in the last days there will be a great falling away. And we're seeing that. There's believers all over that are just slipping back. And they're fading away. And you see, that's not God's best. Because in the last days, the righteous, the body of Christ must be strong. Do you realize this? That because of the Holy Spirit in you, and us being on the earth, we're the restraint on the earth that keeps the devil in check. If it was not for the Holy Spirit inside of us and us being on the earth, the devil would have free reign to rule and to run rampant. But we're here for a purpose, and that's to stand and continue to stand and stand with doing all that you've known to do and stand therefore, continue to stand and be the ones that make the way. We're the icebreaker. We're the ones that are path makers. This church, this people are a path maker. Ever since we moved to New England, we've been on the cutting edge of what God is speaking. I'm not bragging. I'm just saying, look, folks, We've got to focus in. We've got to stand strong. And we've got to be the ones that if we press through, we make a way for another to come through. If you've ever played football, and you know that when the tackles and things, you know, and, and, and everything, move everything out of the way, they get everything clear, then the, whoever's running, quarterback or whoever's running, can run right through the middle. And that's what we're doing. I want you to see, yes, it's strong. It, it, it's, it gets difficult at times. It gets hard at times. Let me just define something. Because this is an apostolic ministry, they lay foundation and they break ground, just like prophets. And I want you to see something. I know that it, sometimes it seems like, Pastor, it's hard. You know, other church I went to, just everything was easy. because you're fighting a real spiritual war. It's because you're in a company of people that are making a way for this region and for this area, as are many others. And we're gathering together. Churches are gathering. Ministries are gathering together so that we can be one strong, mighty force. But don't lose our focus. Our focus is Christ. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a shout of praise. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I'm so thankful for the time that we live in. Can you say amen? Just before we dismiss our young people and children to class, I'm going to ask Rebecca to come, and she's going to uh, scroll through this for us here if I can get this going. Hallelujah. Uh, good morning. Real, ooh, real quick announcements, um, just because I have to go teach. But uh, Ignite is last weekend in October, the 29th and 30th. Woo! Woo! <laughs> thanks. Uh, thanks, Rachel. Uh, so Ignite Saturday, the 29th, is for ages ki uh, kids ages 5 to 11. We're going to have a party event in here, and it's going to be awesome. Um, we need lots of candy. We filled that bin once. Let's do it 
a lot more times because we've got a bin filled of candy. So let's keep filling it. So please bring that in. If you'd like to donate financially, you can see me or Sister Mary Unstifer, and you can give us the cash so we can go out and get candy and prizes and such. And then on the 30th, so Sunday the 30th, we have something for 12 to 18. We're going to have uh, fire pits in the back, and we're going to have food, and that's going to be from... Uh, I got to send another graphic, but it's actually going to be from five to eight because we're going to feed them and play games and have lots of prizes. And so then all that to say, next slide. Is, can we, is that okay? Thank you. Thank you. Um, we are going to be having planning meetings Tuesdays here at the church at 6.30 p.m. We meet in the area that we have coffee. So if you'd like to be a part of that, please come and join. Um, and we need volunteers for both of those nights. And you can see me again afterwards. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So there's great opportunities there. Well, we're going to go ahead and let the children dismiss to their classes. Amen. Young people, praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, this morning, I've asked Brother Mo to come and, and minister to us. Can you say amen? And so I know he's got a word for us. So praise God, brother. Come right on ahead. Amen, my friend. Amen. Well, I can tell you guys, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I had a word for you this morning. I still have a word for you this morning. Uh, Brother Eric, thank you very much for, <laughs> I told Brother Jeff, I said, you know what? I think I'm going to go home now. He's preaching my message. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. So I would like us all to go to Psalm 150, first of all. Thank you, Lord. Psalm 150, verse 1 says, Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the ferment of, of, of his power. And nobody praised him in the sanctuary. Praise him in the sanctuary. It's, you know, it's the easiest thing right now to praise God in the sanctuary because you're among the saints. Amen? Amen. But how many of you know it's a lot harder sometimes when you're going through some things. That's why the title of my sermon this morning is Same Praise. I believe the Lord spoke to me about two months ago, and he asked me, he says that the, the praises that you give out, that you sing to me, are, they the, are your, your praises the same as your breakthrough praise and your going through praise? Because we seem to have a different praise when we break through. But what about when we going through? In my opinion, I'm just saying in my opinion, I think they should be the same because it's all, as Sister Karen shared earlier, it's all about trust. So whenever we're going through something, we know that, hallelujah, glory be to God. Lord God, I'm going to praise you regardless of what I'm looking at. I'm going to praise you no matter how, how things look. I'm going to praise you because your word says that you have seated me in heavenly places with you. So when something comes against me, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take my seat and I'm not going to listen to this problem. Amen. So before we go into all of this praise stuff, I would also like to, I, I watched a movie many, many years ago. It was with uh, Denzel Washington in it, and he was playing a lawyer in this movie. And he said, uh, and, and each time he would ask a question, he would ask this doctor this question. He would say to this doctor, he said, explain it to me like I'm a five-year-old. And, and I'm not saying this to, to try to uh, offend anyone in here, but sometimes we have to look at some of these things like, explain it to me like I'm a five-year-old. We're hearing this thing, praise the Lord, lift up his name, uh, exalt the Lord, let's magnify the Lord. What does all of this mean? So I just went to a, a few scriptures. I'm going to tell you there's a lot of scriptures. But uh, uh, just so we can start off to just look at certain things. First of all, let's go to Psalm 136. Psalm 136.1. Thank you, Father. Psalm 136.1 says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. And some of us, I mean, if you, if you don't know Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. If you don't know God as the King of kings, the Lord of lords, you, the first thing you will say, why? 
it, it gives you the answer right there. For he is good. And then some of you may say, well, well I'm a good person too. But then it goes on to say, for his mercy endures forever. So no matter what I may do or say, I may, <laughs> I may, <laughs> I may be, you know, someone may cut me off in the middle of the street or whatever, or I'm driving down the road and I might uh, flip them the bird or something like that. God still is good. God still loves me. God still shows mercy towards me because the Bible says, for he is good and his mercy endured forever. Amen. Hallelujah. And we're going to go to Psalm 100. Like, as I said, Eric, you preached my sermon this morning. So, <laughs> so <laughs> thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Psalm 100, verse 3. I, I really do, guys. I, I, get, I get excited about this. I can tell you, I, I, I said earlier, uh, like a couple of weeks ago, I, I come, out of a, come out of a church, uh, African Methodist Episcopal. Now, I'm going to say right now, people, churches are different. If you go to an African Methodist Episcopal church, You'll see the pastors, some of those preachers, they get excited. They get fired up. You know, you, you're looking at T.D. Jakes uh, most of the time. So, so I remember in, in my first church, I, I just, I, I started out and I would watch the pastor and, 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 and he, would, he would go into like T.D. Jakes and all that. And I'm looking at him and I mean, man, he was on fire and everything. And I was like, wow. And I, I went up to him one day and I said to him, Good show. <laughs> My God, he looked at me and said, thank God for God is good. His, his mercy endured forever because he looked at me with, with grace and passion. Thank you, brother. But I can tell you, and, and when I get up here and, and sometimes that, uh, that it's that fire, oh, my God, you know, it's like I get excited. So I'm sorry, you guys. If I'm, I'm, not, I'm sorry. I'm not sorry that I'm a little loud because that's the way I am. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So let's go to Psalm 100. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. So, Eric, as you were sharing how the Bible talks about enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. And as he was sharing, and I'm not getting into worship today, uh, but, but, First, you enter into his gates with thanksgiving and praise. And unfortunately for some of us, for some Christians, they're dating God. Because that's all they do is they enter into his gates, give him a little kiss, and that's about as far as they go. And God is saying, I want to be a little more, I want to be intimate with you. I want you to get to know me. So any, anyways, he says, Enter into his gates, be thankful unto him, and bless his name. For the Lord, he is once again good, and his mercy is, for, is everlasting, and his truth endures to all ages. It says that in the, uh, t I always say this, the TPT translation, or the Passion Translation says, you can praise through his open gates. With the password of praise. You can enter into his open gates with the password of praise. Come right in to his presence with thanksgiving. Come bring your thank offering to him and affectionately bless his beautiful name. For Yahweh is always good and ready to receive you. He's so loving that it will amaze you. So kind that it will astound you. And he is famous for his faithfulness toward all. Thank you, Lord. So you say another reason, well, why should I, why, why should I praise the Lord? And I, for, for, for those of us that are born again, that, that know better, that, that know why, it's because the Bible says we love him because he first loved us. So, so, so we're, we're, trying, we're trying to give back that love, to show our appreciation for him. Amen? Psalm 8. 
I'm just uh, setting some things up so we can uh, know why we're doing some of these things. Psalm 8. Thank you, Father. Satan, thinking that he was equal with Jesus, uh, challenged Jesus to a, a typing contest on the computer. I'm not preaching heresy because we know that Satan is not equal to Jesus because Jesus is God. God created Satan. So anyways, so you can go home and not think that I'm preaching heresy right here. But so anyway, so he, he, he challenges Jesus to a typing contest. So they're, they're on the computer and they're typing, they're typing, they're typing, they're typing, they're typing, they're typing. You know, because Jesus said, you know what, just to humor him for once, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to go through in this thing. So they're typing, 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 typing. All of a sudden, <laughs> the power goes out. And then Satan gets so upset with God. He says, oh, no, oh, no. The power went off. But you'll never know who won this contest. And then all of a sudden, Jesus' scream pops back on. And everything is right there. And he looks at God, and God smile, looks at Satan and smiles, and he says, Jesus saves. <laughs> hallelujah. Oh, so hallelujah. So <laughs> thank you, Lord. So Psalm 8, 1 says, Yahweh, our sovereign God, this is from the Passion Translation, your glory streams from the heavens above, filling the earth with the majesty of your name. People everywhere see your splendor. You have built a stronghold by the songs of children. Strength rises up with the chorus of infants. This kind of praise has power to shut Satan's mouth. Psalm 9, 1 through 3. David says, I will worship you, God, with extended hands. This is once again the TPT for translation. And right here it says that praise is yada, it's from the Hebrew, Hebrew word yada, which can mean to shoot an arrow. Or to worship with splendid hands. It implies an ecstatic burst of praise that is thrown into the heavens like a shout. It is the praise that breaks strongholds. And he says, I will tell everyone everywhere about your wonderful works. I will be glad and shout and triumph. I will sing praise to your exalted name, O Most High. For when you appear, I worship you while my enemies run and retreat. They stumble and perish before your presence. You, th <laughs> you, you, you think back to you, you, the, the enemy cannot stand the presence of God. He hates us. We all know that. But I, I, was, I, I was also wondering if one of the reasons why the enemy retreats is in the book of uh, Job, it talks about how, how uh, at, in, uh, when Job was asked, when God was asking Job the question, where were you when I created everything? And he asked Job, and when the sons of God rejoiced. The sons of God were, were, were the angels of God. So, so Satan was the worship leader. So Satan was doing what we are doing today. So does it frustrate Satan when the saints of God can open up their, uh, open up their mouths and give praise to God? I wonder if that's one of the th reasons why he feels, I got to leave this room. Because they're doing something that I used to do that I cannot do anymore. Just a thought. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Let's go back to, I got some more right here. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. All right, another verse right here. Psalm 149. This is where we're going to get ready to shoot off here, you guys. Psalm 149. Thank you, Jesus. Psalm 149, 2 through 9. These are all familiar verses. Thank you, Father. 
Let Israel rejoice in him that made him. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let them praise his name in the dance. So you can praise him in the dance. Hallelujah. Let them sing praises unto him with the timbrel and harp. For the Lord take his pleasure in his people. He will beautify the meek with salvation. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. The, uh, the, oh, I'm thinking uh, it's where it says 2 Corinthians talks about how the weapons of our warfare are mighty through God. In there, he's talking about the word of God. But the, one of the things that he's talking about, he said the weapons as Eric shared earlier, warfare, praises, warfare, hallelujah. And, and this is, once again, the weapons of our warfare are mighty through God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. It goes on to say, to execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people, to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron. So I'm just going to go right to the TPT translation again. It says that, Oh, hallelujah. These warring weapons will bring vengeance on the nations and every resistant power to bind kings with chains and rulers with iron shackles. Praise-filled warriors will enforce the judgment decrees upon against their enemies. This is, the this is the honor he gives to all his godly lovers. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, 2 Corinthians 2.14 says, uh, God has always caused us to triumph. So if, the, if 1 John 4.17 says that as he is, so are we, we are triumphant. Amen. So I want to go to... <laughs> Eric, I'm going to mention your name a lot. I, I'm going to stop. <laughs> I want to go to 1 Samuel 30. Hallelujah. I told Brother Jeff, I said, you know what? I can go home now. This guy done preached my sermon. Thank you, Lord. Let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 30. Thank you, Lord. Blessed be your name. Thank you, Lord. So I can't go there from there. First Samuel, uh, for a lot of us have heard this before. Once again, if there are some new saints in here, maybe you have not. So I'm going to just go on to think that maybe there are some new saints in here that, that, that haven't heard this one before. And so it says that, but then again, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And, and it doesn't go by, by heard. Well, I heard that before. Yeah, you, well, we all need to hear it again because hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I had something that happened to me probably about a month ago at work. Oh, hallelujah. And, and we, because we hear about certain things that certain people speak. And, and we, we, we have the opportunities to receive that or not. And, and uh, so I was riding on, uh, on my jack and going into the, the freezer, and there were two guys that were working in there, and they had the, uh, I, now I lost that, hallelujah, thank you, Lord, blowtorch, and they were working, and as, and as I was going through, uh, one of the guys, he got a little nervous, and he kind of crimped the, the cord up, and the, and the other work, co-worker was pushing it down, pushing it down, because uh, I didn't, as, I, as this happened, I just went right by there and everything. But then he came up to me later, and he says, Mo, I, I was really nervous there, uh, because uh, he says that the way that torch was, if you sometimes crimp that thing up like that, that thing can explode. And he says that people would have been, people would have, it would have been in the news uh, 
Mo Daldell, his coworker, da, 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 they they got blew up and they, they got blew up and they were the, and, and at first I was like, oh yeah, no, and then I said, no, 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 no. I said, Nelly? Oh, I'm sorry, I shouldn't say But I said, no. I said, first of all, the Bible, the Bible says that the angel of the Lord encamps about round about those that fear him. And, and I said, there was no way that that wouldn't have happened to me. <laughs> so that wouldn't have happened to us. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm just saying because some things, you, some things people say to you and you receive them and, and you should not be doing that. So, so, so I don't know why I went off on that one. But anyways, the Bible talks about how David, and he, he had this, his army and they went. It came to pass when David and his men were come to Ziglag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziglag, and smitten Ziglag, and burned it with fire. And it goes on to say, and had taken the women captives that were therein, they slew them not, but they carried them away. I'm going to go on down to verse 5, and, and uh, David's two wives were taken captives, Ahinam, uh, uh, the Jezreelites, and uh, his wives. And David was greatly distressed, for the people spake of stoning him, because the soul of all people was grieved, every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord. So what does that sound like? What does, what does it sound like? Another translation said that David strengthened himself in the Lord. So, I believe that David went back to his victories from the past. He went to the victories from the past, but he experienced another victory in the future. But anyway, he went back to the past where he remembered where, where first of all, the Bible says that he was distressed. He was discouraged. David's job with King Saul was to play instruments. And the instruments removed that evil spirit, that, 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 that spirit that was depressing Saul. So, side note right here. That was David's job. Do not despise your job. Because it could be leading you into something that God has for you. You can actually be learning something from that job. Because David was like, wait a minute now. If I could play instruments and remove something from this man. And maybe he thought back to, I slew the lion. I slew the bear. There was, this, there was this uncircumcised Philistine in front of me, but he did not defy. See, this is the thing. David didn't take it personal. David says, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that's going to speak against our God? Now, when you put our God in it, that's when you got God on the scene. Amen? Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. So I believe that he just encouraged himself in the Lord. Lord, I know that you had my shot when I faced the giant, when I faced the bear, and I my shot out of my mouth. You came through for me. So he started to praise him again. And David, the Bible says earlier that he danced, and David knew how to dance. So once again, I believe that David gave a little dance unto the Lord. Amen. Same praise, though, because I, I believe that. Hallelujah. He knew that he was in a place of victory. No matter what goes on. Let's go to two more people here. Paul and Silas. So we're going to go to the book of Acts chapter 16 verse 25. Thank you, Lord. I've been getting a lot of, uh, I, I, and I don't know why. I told Sean, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago that that uh, I used to watch wrestling years ago when I was a young lad. <laughs> oh, man. 
and 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 they, I, I don't know if you guys, uh, if anyone grew up watching wrestling, well, in, in in my day anyway. But but anyways, there were these two two giant guys. They were Professor Taru Tanaka and his twin brother. And, and I said to Sean, I said, when you and Mike was up here, I saw you guys, but I thought of them because they, not that they were evil, but they were giants. They were giants. That's what, that's what praise can do. Praise can make you into a giant because, because when, you, when you get into God's presence, it's like, it's then that my shot. If when you get into God's presence, it's like you're going in, you're like your Clark Kent at first. If you're going through something, and then all of a sudden, you, all of a sudden, wait a minute now, you run into that, uh, that oh man, I was going to say phone booth, but I, some of you may be looking at me, what is he talking about? But anyway, you go into that phone booth, you start praising God. Hallelujah, glory be to God. Lord, I give you praise. Lord, I give you thanksgiving. Lord, I give you honor. You are the King of kings. You are the Lord of lords. You are the Prince of Peace. You are my Savior. You are my God. You are my King. You are my victory. You are my leader. You are my standby. You are my help. Oh, I look unto the hills where my help cometh from. Oh, glory be to God. You are for me, not against me. Oh, hallelujah. Then you jump out of that phone booth. Oh, glory be to God. God in my shield and my shop. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. The devil looks at him and says, that's another person now. Hallelujah. Now that person knows who they were or they are in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So where was I? Hallelujah. Woo! <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So, yeah, let's go there. Hallelujah. Acts 16. Thank you, Father. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to go back to. So the story of Paul and Silas was, uh, so Paul figuring that he's going to listen to God. <laughs> and got jailed for it. <laughs> How many of you can do that? What? <laughs> Amen. You're out there doing the will of God, and all of a sudden you get thrown into jail. Thank you, Lord. It says... When they got arrested, when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely. And the jailer, who having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison. So he put them in the inner prison. He put them in the deepest part of the prison. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so Paul and Silas are in deeper doo-doo than the prisoners that they're in with because they're in, they're in the deeper part of the prison, the inner part of the prison. And the Bible goes on to say, <laughs> you, you know, uh, that now th this is two of them now. It doesn't say that Paul and Silas begin to uh, grumble because if you notice something that uh, when Paul was with uh, first, the first one that he was uh, he was joined to was Barnabas, and the Bible says that there was a dissension between the two, so so they were actually separated. So Paul and Paul was now with Silas. So right here and right now, I'm telling you, I think that sometimes you have to watch the people that you may be partnered with. Because I believe that Paul looked at Silas and quoted Psalm 34 and said, Hey, Silas, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. The Bible says that Paul and Silas sang praises unto God. Not only did they sing praises unto God, it said that the prisoners 
heard them. The prisoners heard them. And so I, I go back to, wait a minute, I, I, I was reminded about, about, about Bartimaeus, blind, blind Bartimaeus. Blind Bartimaeus, when he, when Jesus was walking, blind Bartimaeus says, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And the people told him, be quiet. Shut up. Paul and Silas are in prison at midnight. People are trying to sleep. And here these men are praying and singing praise to God and nobody said a word. I said, that must be some pretty good praise. That could have been some Nat King Cole praise, some old blue eyes praise, some Sean and Michael praise, some Bethel praise, but it must have been some good praise because the prisoners heard them. Hallelujah. And suddenly, hallelujah, praise brings suddenly. Hallelujah. I was reminded of something else. Oh, going back to David. When David, when David was bringing back the Ark of the Covenant and he had blessed the people and then he went home to bless his wife. His wife, Michael, had seen him out there in the streets and he was singing and he was praising God and he was dancing and he was undignified but David was going home to bless his house <laughs> but she met him at the door how many of us have stopped the blessing coming through the house all that I'm my shot because you had discord, hallelujah. Because you were upset, you were one praise away, one praise away, opening the door. The blessing wants to come in. God wants to bring that blessing, God wants to bring that breakthrough. You already have it, we already have it, but we got to do something. As I said, I go back to wrestling uh, once again. I, I was thinking also about. About uh, the, and I, I don't know if they still do it now, tag team wrestling. Anybody know about tag team wrestling? Okay. Now, in tag team wrestling, there are two guys in the, in, in the, in the, in the, in the, in, in the ring. Thank you. Two guys in the ring. So they're fighting, they fight. And finally, when one guy, he's had enough or he's getting beaten up. Hallelujah. He got to get back to that, to the end of that rope. And he gotta and he gotta touch that partner, and then that partner has to get into that uh, into the ring with him. So how many of us, hallelujah, have been beaten up or getting beaten up? And God is saying, all you got to do is lift up your hands. I'm right here. God is right here at the end of the, at the ring right here saying, here, touch my hand. Touch my hand. All you got to do is worship me, praise me, know where you are, know where I am. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. One blessing away. She had out of my shot. David was there to bless his wife. And, and as we know, the Bible says that she said that uh, she, she showed the discord. And then the Bible says that she was, she was barren for the rest of her life. Praise brings breakthrough. Praise brings fruit. Hallelujah. Ha, <laughs> And then suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened. All the doors were opened. Hallelujah. Not only were they set free, but the prisoners were set free. Hallelujah. This is the, God, I'm on my shot. This is the kind of breakthrough. Hallelujah. When people see, hear, and know that you may be going through the same thing that they're going through. And you can lift up holy hands. You can praise them. You can trust them. You can break through. That can bring them out too. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. So where am I right now? Thank you, Father. Lord, we bless you. We praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory be to your name, Father. We thank you. We thank you, Father, for breakthrough. We thank you for praise. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. <laughs> thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. We're going to go back to 150. Thank you, Lord. So that's what, huh? So I, I keep going back to now this song. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. Hallelujah. Lord, we give you praise, Lord God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. So God doesn't care. I, I don't, uh, I, 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 maybe this was, maybe because it's throwback Sunday, Pastor. <laughs> when we praise, you could you could sound like Edith Bunker. <laughs> and you knew who you were then. God doesn't care as long as you bring a praise. Hallelujah. God is not God doesn't care as long as you bring a praise with your whole heart. Hallelujah. You may have to work it up sometimes. Hallelujah. But it shouldn't be all the time that you have to work up a praise. Hallelujah. You should be able to get up in the morning. I give thanks unto you, Father, because you are good. Hallelujah. I praise you, Adonai, for you are good. I thank you, Lord, that you who began to work in me, you will complete it. Hallelujah. I thank you, Lord. I thank you. I may be under construction, but I am not where I used to be. Hallelujah. I thank you, Lord. I may be going through this, but your words, and then I'm, I'm, I remember that I'm, Hallelujah. Andre Crouch says, I don't feel no ways tired for you, but I, I've come too far where I started from. Oh, glory be to God. Nobody told me this road would be easy, but I don't believe you brought me this far to leave me. You will never leave me. You will never forsake me. Oh, glory be to God. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Hallelujah. Oh, glory be to God. I thank you that you saved me. I thank you that you delivered me. I thank you that you freed me. I thank you that you love me. Glory be to God. Woo! Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. I remember this one time I, I, I led this guy to the Lord in and, and, and the, and the warehouse. Hallelujah. <laughs> and and uh, I, I led to the Lord. And, and then afterwards I said, excuse me for a minute. I got to go shout. And I did. I ran. I was like, Hallelujah. I let out a praise. It's time for us to let out some praises. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then I said, Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And hallelujah. So, Father, we hallelujah. We thank you. So, so uh, I believe same praise. I believe same praise, just, just knowing where you are, just knowing where, where Christ has seated you. Hallelujah. Having faith and having trust. Hallelujah. 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 That he is good. He is good. He loves us. He promised us that he would never leave nor forsake us. Hallelujah. He's coming back for a church without spot and without wrinkle. He's not coming back for a defeated church. He's coming back for a conquering church. Hallelujah. He's coming back for a, a triumphant church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Thank you, Lord. Romans says that all of creation is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Hallelujah. Let's manifest his glory. That's all. Thank you, Jesus. Let's stand to our feet and just give the shout of praise unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, we praise you. We exalt you for your goodness and your mercies and endure forever. Lord, we praise you for all that you are. We praise you, Lord, that you are our high tower and our strength. In the time of help, we run unto it. Lord, we thank you and glorify you. Oh, we give you praise more than enough. In every situation. Oh, let's thank him today, church. Hallelujah. Exalt the Lord. Exalt the Lord. Exalt the Lord. Praise your Lord. Hallelujah. During situations and time in life, when it comes at you strong, (laughs) that's the time to praise. Like Brother Mo said, not in the time of victory, We need to praise God when the times are not going as good as we want them to. That's where the real victory is, when you praise God through it. Hallelujah. Let's just thank him some more. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. Glory, glory, glory. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'd like to pray for this couple right here. I, I forgot your names. Come up, you and your husband. If I, if I could, I'd like to pray for you. Come on, I don't want to embarrass you. Amen. You both received a miracle. Amen. Back still doing good? All right. How about your foot? Still, still doing good. Amen. The Lord wants you to know that it's, he's seen some of the struggle you're going through. But what Brother Mo said today is you've got to learn to praise him. You've got to learn to exalt him. You've got to learn to just give everything that you got to the Lord because he's got some things for you to do. Do you believe what I'm saying? I mean, I, I once you got born again, you asked Christ into your life, things began to change. And now... He's wanting to prepare you. He's wanting to prepare you. And so I just wanted to uh, just call you because I I felt like the Lord wants you to be recognized and for you to recognize that that what Brother Mo preached today about praising and exalting the Lord, because it's sometimes you want to pull your hair out, you know, but that's the time to really praise him. That's the time to praise him. That's the time to worship him. And so right now, let's stand in agreement on that. Whatever the situation is here, the struggle, family issues with with some relatives, we break the power of it in Jesus' name. And I declare right now that this couple, just take hands, Lord, that they are going to be strong in you. And Lord, I thank you that you're going to open the, the doorway, help them to grow in you, and help them to find that place that you've called them, help them to press in, help them to bring their family, bring their children up and to nurture them under the things of the Lord. And I thank you, Father, right now. Today will be a day of breakthrough. They're going to see a turnaround. Thank God for their salvation. But now it's time to move in and step it up in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Praise God. So thankful you're here. It's important to be in church. Amen. Let's thank the Lord for his goodness. Just before I move on here, is there somebody that's having a problem in their ear? I don't know if it's hearing or if it's like an earache or whatever. I think it's like your right ear. Is there somebody here? All right. Well, they're going to get them. Praise God. Amen. Anybody? problem with hearing. Okay. Amen. 
I know a lot of wives probably raised their hands. <laughs> but let's just, which ear is it? Both of them. Certain sounds. Low? Lower sounds? Okay. All right. Um, Sean, would you mind helping me, son? Would you hold the mic for me, please? In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I command right now for these ears to open, open, and for these nerves within the ear to begin to function properly. And I speak healing in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Now test it out. Test it out. If it's lower voices, if it's lower things. Okay. We'll just test it out. You're healed in Jesus' name. Amen. Sister Paulette, come. One ear? Okay. Your left ear. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I command this ear to open. Be open in Jesus' name. I command hearing to be restored, the auditory nerve to work perfectly. Speak no damage in Jesus' name. Hmm. As a child or something, did you have like an infection that wouldn't go away or something? Problem with your ear? Okay. Well, I just, I just see something that, that has caused damage there, and so I speak to it in Jesus' name. I rebuke this, and I command it to be whole. Amen. Amen. Put your... Hand or finger in the other ear and see if you can hear. You hear better? Can you hear better? Is it better? How about it? You can hear it. All right, we'll give the Lord a praise then. Clogged, but now it's open. Oh, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Ears? Okay, both? Okay. Pressure from sinuses. Well, in Jesus' name, sinuses, I command you right now to shrink back to normal. No infection in Jesus' name. And where that drains down in, I command right now to be healed in Jesus' name. I speak life, health, and strength into your flesh. Pressure, I command you to be removed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yawn a couple of times and you'll hear it pop. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Well, amen. Thank you, Jesus. God is good. Amen. How many cheerful givers do we have in the house? Amen. We're going to give you an opportunity to sow and plant. Uh, for those that are in the auditorium, back at the back, if you need an envelope, uh, we have them there. You can fill those out. Uh, you can pay by check, cash, money order, or credit card. For you that are viewing on the Internet, uh, there's a graphic on the screen there. We encourage you to sow and plant. This is a good ministry to sow into. This is good ground. We've got people out of this church all over the world. We support many missionaries. I got to thinking about that the other day. Man, we've got people in other parts of the world that came out of this church. We've got churches all over that have been started up from people that have come out of this church. Praise God for that. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And so you have a part in that. When we sow and plant, we're planting not only into what we do here, but we're actually the, the, the gift of God is that he takes the, the finances and the resources and he distributes it and disperses it around the world. And so we're so thankful for that. I want to encourage you in your giving. The Bible says to bring you all the tithe into the storehouse, says the Lord. He says, prove me now herewith, that I, if I'll not open you the windows of heaven. And that word open and that 
verse, you know, that says that open you the windows of heaven, not will he also open up the, that word windows of heaven should be translated the floodgates, but it also means that we are a conduit that God can move through. I want to be the conduit for the God's blessing. Can you say amen? That's why that it, for people that are givers and cheerful givers, that God can use you to pour out finance into your life so that you can distribute it. You see, when God can trust you with money because you're a tither, because you're a giver, then he gives you the opportunity for him to work through you. You might say, well, what's the tithe? It's the first 10 of all of your increase, not only your paycheck, but birthday gifts, you know, anniversary gifts, whatever gifts, whatever increase is, anything that brings increase. You know, people have, you know, given me uh, guitars and things like that or, or cars. I find out what the value is and I pay a tithe on it. No, that's increased to me. And I've learned over the years by being obedient in those simple things that we're blessed. We are blessed. We're a blessed people. This church is a blessed people. So I just encourage you, let God get involved with your finances. Can you say amen? So, Father, bless each and every one that gives and sows today and plants. Thank you for the increase. I thank you that you rebuke the devourer for our sakes. We glorify you and praise you in it. And give you thanks. Amen. Hallelujah. Just a few things coming up. October 26th, 27th, and 28th. Amen. That's a Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Uh, the Bradys are going to be coming back. And uh, how many of you really enjoyed them? Praise God. They're coming back. They're excited. They're, they really feel that God is doing something. They're, they're looking and, and believe that, you know, great outpour is going to start here in New England. We've heard that, you know, uh, other people uh, prophesied that over the years, that it's going to be here in New England. Why? Because this is the seedbed of faith in America. This is where it all started, right here in the area which we live in. And so they're excited about that coming to fan the flames of revival here in New England. So invite your friends now. Call people. Let them know. We'll be sending out mailers. You'll be able to hear it on the radio. We'll be announcing that. So I encourage you about it. Amen. Also, join us for Friday night prayer. We've had some powerful breakthroughs, a lot of, you know, testimonies of people, uh, and we've just been praying. You know, let me just say this before we close. Once a month, we meet with prayer with ministers to pray. And one of the things about it that is, is so awesome is, is a lot of times people look at maybe the size of something and judge it by the size. We might only have a handful of people that are praying. But let me tell you something. When you have one that can put 1,000 to flight, Two that can put 10,000 to flight. And the third time is 10,000 times 10,000, which is 100 million. And then multiply that by itself again, and you're into the quintillions. So it's not the amount, it's not the size, it's what you do. It's the quality of speaking and praying. And there's a way to pray. And so I encourage you to come and, and join us for that. Praise God. Well, listen, I call you blessed in the Lord. Amen. Brother Mo, thank you, brother. Amen. Awesome, awesome word. Amen. Praise the Lord. Exalt the Lord. Amen. So, Father, bless your people. Thank you for today. As we go, as we enter the mission field, help us to win somebody to Christ this week. Help us to bring somebody next week with us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I call you blessed in the name of the Lord. Amen.